distinguished guests, I stand here before you a man who is thankful because of a miracle that occurred in my past. I can truly say that I'm a happy man because of the single experience that happened to me so long ago. Of the many wide-ranging events, this one important still stands above all the rest. You might think that I'm fortunate because of what I do and the success that I embrace while doing it. You would not be wrong. If you believe that I've loved deeply and tenderly and that I value my children, you would not be mistaken. However, the day I learned to read a book unaided was the day that my life was vitally transformed. I grew up and existence took on a new meaning. Education is perhaps the single most important condition in life. Everyone understands it to be an essential necessity. Education frees us. It transcends divisions. It unites us in culture, language, dance, theater, poetry. It tells us that pleasure is unlimited whilst giving us a deeper understanding of self. Education teaches us to listen. And tonight, I know that you're listening. <laughs> Books and the exercise of reading is the only way that an individual can become wise. More importantly, teaching is the only method to transfer meaningful truth from one generation to the next. Illiteracy is perhaps the most serious crime against the advancement of individuals, societies, and civilizations. Everyone should know how to read. Let us be jealous of those who are more enlightened than us. It's a good thing to foster competition when it comes to intellectual pursuits and to love humanity is to say to your fellow citizen, what I know, I willingly interact with you. And let us share some ideas so that we might come to know each other better. Illiteracy is not a crime against humanity. It's an evil that should not be tolerated. It breeds division and ignorance, extremism, and fundamentalism. What we see happening in the Middle East is a travesty. There seems to be no end to the spiral of violence. Wars rage, and as soon as one is extinguished, another is lit up. The first casualties of war are children. The second casualties are schools. Education can only prosper during times of peace. Ideas need silent meditation for them to be fruitful. There are radicals in the Middle East and around the world that want nothing more than to burn the very books our entire civilization is built on. They see in the rising flames an act of God when in fact it is nothing more than a testament of their stupidity. Radicals hate education because they cannot understand the vital messages contained in them. They fear the very freedom books praise. In their narrow view, why they deem degenerate is in fact a thing of beauty. And what we know of fundamentalism 
is what we see with our very eyes. The barbarity of a movement that wishes to enslave humans by denying the majority the rights to an education. While they place as important, the rest of us mourn their ignorance. What they deem to be correct manner of behavior, we understand to be barbarity. They may subjugate people, but they will never educate what is good, truthful, and progressive, because in the hearts of humans is a strong desire to learn and to teach. The Middle East is a beacon of fire, and devastation is everywhere. In Syria, schools have closed, and the entire educational system has shut down. The refugee crisis has meant that more than ever, children live in camps under terrible conditions. The only schooling available is what NGOs can offer. Most of it is a little too late. Individual initiatives are doing a tremendous work. In Iraq, it's the same thing. In Palestine, the conditions are atrocious. And people here are still not listening. Thank you. Children live in a society dominated by fear and oppression. Daily raids into their territories have led to the complete breakdown of educational systems. Even university students no longer convene at lectures, and professors are too frightened to leave home. The future of human civilization is education. It's the only means by which we can understand ourselves and the society we inhabit. When I look across and see young students in the audience, I would like to tell them a cautionary message. Believe in your strength and believe in your mind, but never follow anyone out of fear or guilt. Make choices that ensure you never feel a loss. Be kind and gentle, but most of all, believe in yourselves and the ideas you might have about how you can improve your life. Tonight, we honor education. We honor those who believe in education. We honor those who invest in education. We honor those who will have a future thanks to education.